Sing to the Lord, to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, sing all the earth. Sing to the Lord, to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, sing all the earth. Make a joyful noise to God, earth and heaven break into song. Singing praise to God on night with voice and whistle and fiddle sound. Sing to the Lord, to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, sing all the earth. Sing to the Lord, to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, sing all the earth. Let the sea and all that fills it be. Sing to the Lord, sing all the earth. Sing to the Lord, to the Lord, a new song. Sing to the Lord, sing all the earth. God is King, the people tremble. We will praise your holy name. Mighty King of peace and justice, great and marvelous are your ways. Sing to the Lord, to the Lord, a new song. Sing to the Lord, sing all the earth. Sing to the Lord, to the Lord, a new song. Sing to the Lord, sing all the earth. Moses and his brother Aaron called unto your holy name, crying to the Lord our God, who answered them in a pillar of cloud. Sing to the Lord, to the Lord, a new Song, sing to the Lord, sing all the earth. Sing to the Lord, to the Lord, a new song. Sing to the Lord, sing all the earth. The Lord our God gave answer to them and forgave them all their wrongs. We'll extol your holy name and worship you on a mountain high. Sing to the Lord, to the Lord, a new Song, sing to the Lord, sing all the earth. Sing to the Lord, to the Lord, a new song. Sing to the Lord, sing all the earth. Make a joyful noise to God with thanksgiving. Bless God's name, for the Lord is gracious and God's steadfast love will always remain. Sing to the Lord, to the Lord, a new song. Sing to the Sing all the earth, sing to the Lord, to the Lord, a new song. Sing to the Lord, sing all the earth, sing to the Lord, to the Lord, a new song. Sing to the Lord, sing all the earth, sing to the Lord, to the Lord, a new song. Sing to the Lord, sing all the A reading from Psalm 98. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for God has done marvelous things. God's right hand and holy arm have brought victory. God has remembered steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and all those who live in it. Let the floods clap their hands, let the hills sing together for joy, at the presence of the Lord. And from Exodus chapter 15, verse 20. Then the prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after her with tambourines 
and with dancing. And Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for God has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider God has thrown into the sea. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. When I was in about third grade, around nine years old, I played Miriam at the TUC annual musical. I was one of a large cast of characters, including Moses, of course, and a very convincing Pharaoh. Many of the songs of that musical remain etched in my memory till this day. Freedom fanatics, freedom fanatics, fanatics for freedom. We're freedom fanatics, fanatics for freedom. <laughs> I can still recall vividly the long rehearsals, the patience of the directors trying to keep large numbers of children on task, the butterflies in my stomach on the day when we were to lead the congregation in worship. I was in the musical every year, but this particular one stayed with me because it was the moment when a new song came into my heart. This was the first time I ever sang a solo, just a few lines that I can't even remember, but that's not the new song that I'm talking about. The new song began to emerge as I walked in the footsteps of the prophet Miriam during those few months. Did I know the word prophet or what that meant at age nine? I don't think so. But embodying Miriam at that musical, I began to hear the whisper of a calling to be a spiritual leader myself. And because I had walked in her shoes or sandals for those few months as we rehearsed and performed the music, I knew it was possible to speak boldly before a congregation of people to be a leader alongside others. And yet when I read this story today, I notice another crucial way in which she was prophetic. During this year's women's conference, we have been exploring the theme, sing a new song. We've heard the words of Psalm 98, 99 and 100 combined with that refrain. These psalms refer back to the Exodus story. But there's one part of the Exodus story that I wish the psalms had included in their telling. And that is what we hear in Exodus 15, just after the crossing of the Red Sea. Allow me to read it again. Then the prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after her with tambourines and with dancing. And Miriam sang to them. In these few short sentences about the prophet Miriam, we learn so much about her and the community of women around her. And importantly, what they brought with them on their harrowing journey. Did you notice it? Miriam took a tambourine in hand and all the women took their tambourines and went out after her. They had tambourines with them. This detail might not seem significant until we remember that they had just escaped from Egypt in a dramatic and traumatic saga. They rushed out of their homes in the dead of night, taking their bread before it had risen because as Exodus says, they were driven out of Egypt and could not wait, nor had they prepared any provisions for themselves. They trudged through the wilderness in a roundabout way by a pillar of cloud in the day and a pillar of, a pillar of fire at night. They were pursued by Pharaoh's army and made a risky crossing of the Red Sea with the waters surrounding them on either side. And yet, despite the urgency, Despite the midnight escape, despite the long wilderness journey, despite the dramatic crossing with plenty of opportunities to leave behind any excess baggage, with many chances to cast off items that weren't worth taking any further, at the end of it all, they still had their tambourines. Miriam and the other women had packed them up in the dead of night as essential as bread. 
In fact, the only two items specifically mentioned that they had with them were unleavened bread and musical instruments. So when it came time to sing that new song, they were ready. Miriam took her tambourine in hand and the women went out after her and they took their tambourines with them and they danced in thanksgiving and joy. Miriam sang to them. After their harrowing experiences, you can just imagine the elation, the relief, the catharsis of that music and dancing and singing. Revisiting this story from the perspective of the work I've been doing in post-conflict Northern Ireland, I look at it with a trauma-informed and also a resilience-informed lens. We recognize that what the Israelites went through was not only dramatic, but traumatic. The injustice of slavery, the cumulative slog of backbreaking work, the horrendous plagues, the panicked escape from Egypt, the terror of being pursued by Pharaoh's army, the risky crossing of the Red Sea, trauma upon trauma. And with this lens, we remember the fragility they must have held within them after facing the compounding effects of these difficult experiences. Yet on the other hand, we also see great resilience. This year, I received an in-depth training in the community resilience model offered by a nonprofit based in the US called the Trauma Resource Institute. In this approach, we recognize the reality of trauma and we also notice the resources for resilience as well. This approach is a bit different than the trauma-informed one. Instead of asking the question, what happened to you in order to draw out all the details about a traumatic event, we might ask a resilience-oriented question such as, what or who got you through? This calls attention to what provides us strength and hope even when faced with something incredibly challenging. And time and time again, the Trauma Resource Institute has found that when people are asked this question all around the world, after any number of natural or human-caused disasters, what people say gets them through are these things. Faith. Community creative expression, all of which we see at play in this story. The Psalms tell us about what got them through, what got the Israelites through. How did they manage that escape? What gave them the strength? Where did they find the courage? What kept them going even when they were terribly tired and scared and uncertain of what was going to happen next? What got them through? What we hear in the Psalms and in this passage about Miriam in Exodus are these things. Faith that God was guiding them toward a better future. Community to be alongside as they made their risky journey. And singing. As they celebrate victory and the relief is washing over them, they sing and they dance. They wave their tambourines. A new song pulsates from them as they tap into what gives them strength and joy, and hope. I remain in wonder at the prophet Miriam. I wish I could have met her, heard her voice, heard her sing, heard the beat of her tambourine. As I walked in Miriam's shoes when I was nine, I felt her inviting me to use my quiet little voice in leadership and I hear an additional invitation to us now. Her invitation, 
is that when things get tough, hold on to what gives us resilience. Faith that God will lead us to a better future. Community to walk alongside on that journey. And singing. Listening for that new song and being ready to sing it and calling others into that joyful song and dance. Throughout this conference, we've been exploring the new song God might be inviting us to sing, whether literally or figuratively. We've been asking ourselves what gets us through challenging experiences. The creative expressions we've identified as our new song will help us flourish, live fully, be our best selves in the world, handle difficult situations, process emotions, connect to each other, and bring more beauty into the world. Singing, yes, but also dancing, writing, poetry, taiko drumming, harp playing, painting, origami, quilting, choirs, harmonies, haiku writing, poetry, hiking, snowshoeing, mountain climbing, studying scripture together, gathering in community to share life's journey. All of these will offer us resources for resilience on our life journeys. They are gifts from God to be treasured, not to be viewed as optional extras, but held as essential for our survival. They are as precious as the bread that feeds us. Miriam and the women and their tambourines, which they refuse to leave behind, show this to us. As women of faith, as sisters in Christ, in the diversity of our backgrounds and the different life stages we are in, Miriam invites us all to prophetically sing a new song, a song of thanksgiving for what God has done, a song of love and mercy, justice and peace, kindness and goodness, a song of walking humbly with God, a song of newness springing forth, a song of joy and delight, a song of healing and of undying hope. So may we all walk in the sandals of the prophet Miriam. May we walk courageously into the future, knowing that God will show us the way. May we bring with us on our journeys those resources for resilience, knowing that what brings us and those around us joy and delight is not optional, but essential to our survival and our well-being. May we always be ready to take up our tambourines and sing a new song of healing and hope and to invite others to sing along with us. Amen. Sing to the Lord, to the Lord, a new song. Sing to the Lord, sing all the earth. Sing to the Lord, to the Lord, a new song. Sing to the Lord, sing all the earth. Make a joyful noise to God. Sing to the Lord, a new song, sing to the Lord, sing all.